Well, good morning, ACF, and for any visitors, welcome to church. My name is Callum. I'm one of the pastors at Elam in Paisley. Um, today, you have picked the best Sunday to come to church because it is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, but three days later, he rose victoriously from the tomb, that the grave could not handle this man Jesus. And that's why today there are billions of people across the world worshipping him, singing about him, writing books about him, even under the midst of being in lockdown. And I want to highlight today just the significance historically of this Sunday. This is pretty much the only Sunday in living history where the church throughout the world has been unable to meet in person. It will go down in the history books, in the history of Christianity in hundreds of years time, looking back at today. But I want to encourage you, wherever you are, whoever you are, we are joining today with billions of people who are in the similar situation to ourselves, and yet they will still worship God, they will still sing to Jesus, they will still praise him because he's risen from the dead. So wherever you are just now, I want to encourage you to stand, to sing. We're going to worship God together. Let's sing. I was buried beneath my shame. Out of the 
The resurrection blows me away because, firstly, that God sacrificed his son for you and me. Secondly, that Jesus willingly went to the cross for you and me. And thirdly, he's risen. He overcame death on the cross. And I can't imagine what it's like when the, the ladies went to the tomb and the disciples went to the tomb and saw it was empty, the stone was rolled away, and then the angel appearing and saying that he is risen. Amazing. The resurrection blows me away because we we have been brought back to life. Everything became new. The Bible says that in Ephesians uh, 2 verse 6 that for he has raised us from the dead along with him and seated us with him in the heavenly realm. So now we are united with him. Amen. salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor on to thee Now the curse of sin has no hold 
hold on me whom the sun sets free oh is free indeed now my debt is paid it is paid in full by the precious blood that my jesus spilt now the curse of sin salvation where your blood poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee see the stone is rolled away behold the empty tomb hallelujah god be praised he's risen from the grave oh the rugged cross my salvation where your blood Now, does anyone know why we celebrate Easter? Tilly, have you got any ideas? <gasps> Chocolate eggs? No. Oh. Bunnies? No. Chicks? No. no. I can hear some of you shouting, no. So why do we celebrate Easter? Because of Jesus, that's right. We celebrate Easter because Jesus died to rescue us and he came alive again and he lives forever. Whoa. Now you can read more about the first Easter in your Bible in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But before we look more at that story, let's go right back to the beginning. So before the beginning of time, God had a wonderful plan. He was going to create a perfect world and people to be friends with him. But he knew that people would make wrong choices. He knew that wrong choices and death and sickness and tears would all enter his perfect world. But he had a plan. He knew that we couldn't rescue ourselves. But he loved us so much that his plan was to send the great rescuer, Jesus. And together they would put off the greatest rescue ever. So Jesus was born in the stable in Bethlehem. His parents were Mary and Joseph and he grew up just like you and me. Except he didn't make a single wrong choice, not even one. And when he was older, at about 30, Jesus started uh, doing miracles and telling people what the kingdom of God was like. He provided enough food for 5,000 people to, to eat just from bread and fish. He healed the sick and he set people free and many, many more miracles. He wanted to show what Father God was like and how much he loved them. But some people didn't like Jesus and they didn't like that uh, lots of people were listening to him and wanted to follow him. So, and they wanted to, to kill him. So Jesus was nailed to, to a cross. A crown of thorns was put on his head and he was beaten. And that would have hurt Jesus and it hurt his friends to, to watch it. But Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to do it. He was willing to go to the cross and die. And his friends buried Jesus in a tomb and a huge stone was rolled in front of it. But the rescue plan was still in motion. This was the ultimate act of love. Jesus had to die to pay the price for our wrong choices so that we could be forgiven. But Jesus' friends didn't understand what was going on. They were really sad. But thankfully, that is not the end of the story. 
On Easter morning, Mary and some of her friends went to the tomb and found the big stone had been rolled away. What? What was happening? Jesus was gone. Can you show me your surprise faces? And then an angel appeared to them and said, Why are you looking for Jesus here? He's not dead. He's not here. He is alive. Wow, they were so happy. And they ran to tell the disciples. And then lots of Jesus' friends saw him alive. They met them on the the road walking. And Jesus even made some of them um, uh, breakfast on the beach. Wow, Jesus is alive. And they were so happy. Can you show me your happy, excited faces? Hooray! And do you know what? Jesus is alive right now. In fact, the Bible says that he's seated at the right hand of his father praying for us. Can you shout in your loudest voice that Jesus is alive? Jesus is alive! Wow. So Easter is when we celebrate that Jesus died and came alive again. He made it possible for us to be friends with God and we can be forgiven for all our wrong choices. Wow, Father God loves you so much and we can live with him forever. Wow, so that is good news. Can you show me some thumbs up? Whoa, it's good news. So we can choose to ask Jesus to be our friend if we want to. We can choose to say sorry for our wrong choices and be forgiven. And as we believe in our hearts that Jesus died and came alive again, we can be rescued forever. We can say, Jesus is my Lord. I'm going to follow him. Whoa. So if you want to do that, if you want to choose for Jesus to be your friend, you can talk to your mum or dad or someone you know who loves Jesus about it and they'll help you. So now let's just pray together. So if you close your eyes. So thank you, Jesus, that you're alive today. Thank you, Jesus, that you love me so much. Thank you, Jesus, that you offer that free gift of forgiveness and that I can talk to you and I can follow you, Jesus, and live with you forever. Amen. Amen. Now, for this week's craft, what you might like to do is either draw a picture from the story, or you could get a piece of paper and you could write on it, Jesus is alive, and you could color it in or put stickers on it, whatever you've got in your house. You could paint it, anything you've got, and that would be brilliant. You can hang it up in your window. So, we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. 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 Well, this is the part of the service now where we would normally move on to our giving. And when we meet together, we usually have people go around with baskets and, and people put in their tithes and offerings. But we can't do that. You guys are at home. And um, so we're looking to do that digitally now. Um, this is really an act of worship for us as, as ECF. And um, it's saying to God, you're in control of my finances and you are my provider. It's our way of saying that together. If you're joining us from another church or tuning in uh, from another church, I want to encourage you, do not give to us. Please look at giving to your own local church and your own uh, body where you've been called called to. That's where you should be giving to over the next few weeks and months. Um, So the details are on screen. There's two ways you can give. You can give via a bags transfer. Thanks to everyone who's moved over to that already. That's been helpful for us to administrate. But the second way we've set up for you to give um, is on our website, ecfpaisley.org forward slash giving. You can go on there. It's a secure online payment that you can make um, on there as well. I finally just want to say, let's make sure we're supporting our local businesses and local charities outside of the church as well. We know that many people are going to be struggling um, over the next few weeks. Um, Let's just pray for them just now. Father, we thank you that we can trust in you as Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. You provide everything we need. You are our daily bread. Lord, we ask that you would give peace to every person who's struggling with anxiety in the midst of this crisis. In your mighty name we pray, amen.
Jesus is called The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes new life is born Jesus is calling The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar Happy Easter! Isn't it amazing to think that Jesus is alive? You know, I think this is the greatest celebration that the church ever has and uh, we need to learn to, to celebrate it. You know, I was thinking, I, I wonder if there's ever been a time when all the churches in the land were empty on Christmas and on Easter Sunday. And, you know, we're, this, is, we're, this is history we're involved in. Uh, the nation has never had this situation. But you know something? Jesus, because he's alive, is with us. Let's just pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, we thank you you came and died and you're alive today. And Father, we thank you for sending 
Jesus, and so that we can know you. And I ask, Holy Spirit, you will come and anoint everything that's said, Father, and we will hear you speak today, because you are a God who communicates with people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to read from Mark chapter 16. It's only eight verses, the first eight verses, and uh, it's, it's a very short story of, of the day of, of resurrection. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they may, might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early in the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they, were ask, they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was a very large stone, had, had been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. And he said, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell the disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. You know, as I read that, the angel said, tell his disciples and Peter. Well, Peter was one of the disciples, so why did he pick him out particularly? The reason was because on the Friday that Jesus he was arrested and sorry the, the Thursday night Jesus was arrested and then he died on the Friday that that he betrayed Jesus that he, he denied even knowing Jesus and um, that's God wanted to reinstate him as one of the disciples and I think the reason why I, I noticed that is because there's someone watching here and you were someone who followed Jesus but then you turned away from him maybe you even mocked other Christians maybe you mocked the church and and so on you think you know it's well you're watching this because you don't have to go to the church well God is calling you back to him today and he's able to do that and you need to hear that today and he forgives all our sins and he can reinstate us into his family. And that's where God wants to do for you today. You know, if you talk to people, they think Jesus, they've all got their own opinion of who Jesus is. And some say he was a good man and he came and did great things and he showed us the way to live. Because, you know, if, if we all lived like Jesus, life would be so much different. But his life on earth achieved so much more than that. Jesus was sent by God the Father and Jesus chose to come, he volunteered to come to this earth and to die for us, to make a way so we can come to God. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You know, I find it interesting that some people who are offended by that because, you see, Jesus is unique and he's actually saying he's the only way to God and some folk are offended by that. And yet they will still include him in, well, every God's the same, but every God is not the same. But Jesus makes it very clear that he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life, and no one comes to his Father except through him. That's why he came. You see, on the cross, Jesus broke the power of sin, death, sin, demons, and sickness. And uh, that sacrifice opened up the door to, to, for us to come to, to God and to know him personally. The, one of the last things he said was a word tetelestai, which is a Aramaic for some say it is finished and others say that the debt is fully paid. Well, it actually means fully paid because you see, or paid in full, because you see, it was a, a, it was a, a, a trade word. Trades would use it if a, if a bill was paid, they would mark on it tetelestai, that was the bill was paid, it was fully paid, or if a debt was repaid, Tetelestai paid in full and there was a debt to be paid for our sin and that was a sacrifice by someone who was pure and Jesus did it. That's what he's referring to. But you see, but while he died and we celebrate he died, but God's plan was bigger than that because Jesus didn't stay dead, he's alive today and he rose from the dead and that's why we celebrate Easter and his name therefore is the most powerful name in the universe. The resurrection is proof that Jesus' sacrifice was fully accepted. Because you see, if Jesus hadn't died 
the, as with a sinless heart, then he would just have been like us and he would just have been a man who died. But the fact is that he died and because his sacrifice was accepted by God, God raised him from the dead. If Jesus had one iota of sin in him, then he would, that would not have been acceptable. And so the, so the resurrection is confirmation of the sacrifice being paid in full. You see, Christianity is based really on one thing and that's the resurrection. Yes, it's based on the cross and the resurrection, but you see, as I said there, if it was just based on the cross and Jesus died and stayed dead, then that would have been it. Paul, who was a, a man who hated the church, he was a, a Jewish a leader and he hated the church in the early church, he would imprison people, kill, have people killed, he would uh, persecute people, he would steal, the, take their properties off them and so on. The early church went through a really hard time, as, su as happens in some countries already uh, today. And, um, the, and he met Jesus, the risen Jesus, when he was going to a place called Damascus to destroy the church. And so his whole enemy became his friend and he blew his mind. And what he said is this, he said, if Christ hasn't been raised, then your faith is futile, you're still in your sins. In other words, the sacrifice wasn't made in the cross, and if Christ hasn't been raised from the dead, what's the point in believing? And it's amazing the number of people that you might know who think you're foolish to believe, but they've never actually used the head to think it through. And it says, then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. In other words, those who, who gave their time and their, their effort and their life to, to follow Jesus, because, because he's been a dead Jesus, then it was a waste of time, they're still lost. But then he says this, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we're to be pitied beyond all men. In other words, if we are just believing Jesus to have a religion on earth and to live a certain way on earth and not think of the future, then really we're quite sad cases. And uh, he makes it so clear. I love the Bible because it's just so so honest. He's saying we are to be pitied beyond everyone if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead. You see, the, the, the empty tomb is what your faith and my faith is based on because it's based on our living Jesus. And Jesus didn't come just to make us uh, Christians or even a good Christian. He didn't come to make us good. You know, there are people who don't follow Jesus. In fact, there are people who hate Jesus who do good things. They're, they're quite good people. Jesus didn't come to make us good. He came to make us alive because the Bible tells us that as far as God is concerned, we are dead. We're dead in, 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 our, in our walk with him. But when Jesus comes into our life, he transforms us and the Holy Spirit comes on us. The Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead in that tomb, he comes on us and he makes us alive to God. We become a child of God. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I love it. And then, But then not only does he save us in this life to, to have a different way of living and to know we're loved by God, because it's incredible to know you're loved by God, but he delivers us from eternal hell. And he takes us to live with him forever. You see, and because Jesus is resurrected, then those who follow the resurrected one will be resurrected themselves at the end of the world. And I want us to, to think of these women, because these it's fine, fine us seeing this in hindsight, but these women were stuck in the, the very centre of this situation. The, the, the events of all events had taken place when God's rescue plan had, had happened. And the and it's planned for us to live with him forever. Yet these people didn't have a clue what was going on. They didn't understand what Jesus was all about, even though they loved him and they followed him. They, they thought that uh, they were doing Jesus a good turn that day. They loved him. They wanted to make sure that you know, well, he didn't have a wife, so they probably wanted to make sure that he was looked after and uh, his body was looked after. And, the, and so they go to the tomb early in the morning. Now, by this time, Jesus already had 75 pounds or 34 kilograms of, of spices already on it, wrapped around his body. So they would put great, a grave clothes around one layer, then they would put these spices on, then another layer of grave clothes, then spices on, and so on. It's 75 pounds. Now that says to me that that whole theory that Jesus didn't die, but he actually just swooned, he fainted. I think for somebody in that situation and having gone through what he'd gone through, 
the physical punishment and to be able to take all that off is going a bit too far. It's easier actually to believe that he was raised from the dead than, than that. So, but, so these women came maybe to finish off the job or maybe just to show respect. We don't really know. We know they came early in the morning and they, just as in some countries today where Christians are scared, so they were, all the disciples were petrified of the religious leaders and of the Romans because of all that had happened in the previous a, a few months. A, but for whatever reason that they were going there, they had two thoughts in mind. One was a corpse, because that's what they were coming for, was to, to, to a, anoint Jesus' body. And, the other, and another was a big problem to them, because on their way there, they suddenly realised, wait a minute, we're going here, but who's going to move the stone? Because there was a huge stone in front of the entrance. And they, in order to get in there, they would have to move the stone. The other thing about this stone was it had the Caesar seal on it that it was commanded by the authorities that the Caesar seal would be put on it and anyone who moved that stone actually would be put to death. But they didn't think that far. All they were interested in was anointing Jesus' body to honour him. So they're thinking, who will move the stone? And the more they thought about it and talked about it, probably the stone got bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. And it was all in their minds. Because how on earth were they going to get near Jesus? That was the problem. Of course, the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. I love that phrase, the tomb was empty. I remember when suddenly that made sense to me. All of a sudden it went from my head to my heart. Wow, the tomb is empty. That they went there expecting something and nothing was there, apart from the grave clothes and, of course, angels. So the stone wasn't a problem, after all. And there was no corpse. So you use your imagination. The, 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 the friend had died and all their hopes of this future that he was offering had gone with it. And seeing Je- they'd seen, had the privilege of seeing Jesus in action and knowing him personally. And, you know, they, were, they were personal friends of his, but, but uh, life carried on as, as they thought, but they didn't realise that Jesus was alive, even although they were in the middle of this. And the stone had been moved when they got there, you see, it was God's grace that moved the stone. Whether it was an angel, we don't know. Whether the stone moved itself, we don't know. We do know that Jesus had said a, a few days before that the stones would actually sing worship to Jesus. And actually, stones do sing a song. The scientists have found that. But nobody actually heard them shouting, let me out of here. And they moved the stone. In fact, the soldiers, the Roman soldiers there wouldn't have touched it because they were so scared have been put to death himself if, if something had happened. So the stone was moved, but the stone wasn't moved to let Jesus out. The stone was moved so they could go in, and so the others could go in and see the empty tomb, because Jesus could still be raised from the dead with the stone still there. There's, I mean, getting out of that, a, out of that a sealed tomb was nothing to, to God. Before we move on, I want to read a description of what Jesus looks like now. John, the ba- John, who was a disciple of Jesus, he was the youngest disciple and he was very close to Jesus. And uh, when he was an old man, God gave him incre- an incredible visions of the end times. I believe we're in the end times now. And uh, some, a lot of the things refer to, to now and how we should live. But other things are specific about the end times. But at the beginning of it, he hears a voice speaking and it says he turns around and he sees someone like standing like the Son of Man. Now, the Son of Man. Now, Jesus loved that phrase, a Son of Man, because it, it, it was basically saying, I'm human. And he loved identifying with us so much. He used it all the time, that, the Son of Man, the Son of Man, because he loved to identify with us because he loved mankind so much. And it says he was dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a gold sash round his chest, and his head and hair were white as white like wool. See, look at the colour of mine. It was white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. Do you know that Jesus is so alive? He appears to people on earth. 
there are report upon, uh, report upon report upon report of Jesus coming into a Muslim towns and villages and into the refugee camps and he's visiting people and telling people who he is and then he'll suddenly just disappear. And he's known as the, the man in white and, and, and many, many Muslims are finding that Jesus Christ is alive. Isn't it amazing? Then he says, John says this, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and he said, Don't be afraid, I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead. And behold, I'm alive forever and ever. Amazing, isn't it? But that's not just, that's not, that's not the only thing he says. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Jesus won that back from Satan. And he holds the keys of death and Hades. On the cross he overcame sin and demons and sickness. But in that empty tomb, God overcame his legal um, judgment on earth of, uh, of death. And he defeated it. It's amazing. That's why so many people are turning to Jesus in these days. Now, here's the thing. As I was reading this, in another of the, the Gospels, the, the woman didn't just say, who will roll the stone away, but who will roll the stone away for us? And that hit me. You see, God had moved the stone, not a person moved the stone, so really they were just thinking a human level, but God was in this. God is supernatural, and this church is supernatural, and he does things supernaturally. He's amazing. And so, so they wanted to... to honoured Jesus so much because they loved him but they were aware that they would be unable to do so because of this barrier between them and his body, i.e. the stone. There was a blockage between them and him but there was no blockage because Holy Spirit had raised Jesus from the dead and God had arranged it for the stone to be taken away so they could experience the joy of the resurrection. And as I, as I was reading these verses I was thinking of, I know some people who they love Jesus, but they feel they can't get near him. They've never experienced the intimacy with Jesus that, that we were created for. They've never experienced the intimacy with the Father or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And it's sad, and they'll see other people, they'll hear God speak, or God will do this for them, or, or they'll read the Bible and it becomes alive, and they, and they think, I'll never be like that. So they stay at this side of the stone. But there is no stone there. That's the thing. You see, the devil has lied to you. He's told you that this big gulf is there and you just need to live with it. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible calls us to come closer to him. Jesus, The Bible often says, come, come to me, come. Jesus said, if we weak and heavy laden, to come to him. And he, and he talks about being yoked to him, you know, walking with him in intimacy. The Father wants you to know what it is to have him as a father, not just up here in your head, but also experience his arms around you, to experience the, the being loved by him, because that's why Jesus came. Remember, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, whoever, as everyone believes in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Or God shows, it, shows his love to you in this, that while we were still sinners, while our back was turned to him, wanted nothing to do with him, we'll do it ourselves, God. Christ died for us. That's why he came. And so the women were worried about nothing. And I'm saying to you that you're worried about nothing. If you're feeling that there's a, a gap, there, God, is, God has made it so you can come into that place of intimacy. But you need to stop believing the lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's, is Satan stopping you enjoying being a son or daughter of God? I'm saying to you to stop believing it. Believe the truth. Get into what the Bible says. Ask God to make it relative, relevant to you. Ask God to, for you to understand it. Ask him, the Holy Spirit, to reveal the love of the Father to you. But if, if, if you don't do that, if you're not bothering to read this, then you will stay that side of the stone. It's your choice. So come to him. Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. Get to know Holy Spirit and he will lead you into all truth and he will reveal the truth of God's word to you. So stop that. Stop living as if it's a, if it's a truth that you can't get near God. You see, the Bible tells us my life changed this when I saw that many years ago. I got excited because I felt like that 
it was fine for everyone else, but not for me. But then one day I read, one of the, th the things I read at that time was, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. I take the first step, he takes a huge step. And that's what you need to do today to know him. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. If you've never met Jesus, it's the same with you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. There's nothing more God's going to do to get you to heaven. There's nothing more he can do. It's all been done on the cross of Calvary and in the empty tomb. Just wait. He's waiting for you to come to him. So this is what we need to do. First of all, we need to admit that we're living in a great deception. If we are somebody who, who's a Christian, but really we don't know the intimacy, we need to admit that, that I've been believing a lie, that I can't get close to God and I just need to just go through the religious motion. Or maybe you're somebody who's never been to church, you, 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 or somebody who goes to church and you've never actually met Jesus. Well, admit that you need him. Admit that really you're, you're, you're being deceived because God loves you. Then we need to repent. Repent isn't just to... Is ch change the, the direction of our life. It's to think differently. Repent the the the, the a French for for to think is ponce. Re rethink. See what the Bible says and choose to believe that. And then renounce the lie. Father, forgive me for believing the lie. When you've done everything out of love for me to come to you, um, and then, just, then enter into resurrection life. Say, Lord. I want to know that you're alive. I want to know that you, that you care for me. I want to know that you want me to be intimate with me. And then live it. Jesus came to give us the abundant life. It's a, it's, a, it's a quality of life and also for eternity. So if you don't know Jesus personally, you can today because he's alive. That's, the, that's how you can get to know him. And then there's nothing stopping you. You need to know that because God has made that way, the only way. I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. But all can. How, what stops us? Well, usually it's our pride. Usually it can be rejection. But really, you know, God's, God's love drives out re rejection. Drives out fear of being rejected. So the tombs that were, were in Jesus' day had a low door. In order to come into the, into the, the tomb, the, the disciples had to stoop in order to get through the door. And that's what we have to do. If we want to receive a revelation of God's love and a revelation of the resurrection, that Jesus Christ is real and he is alive, then we need to humble ourselves before God. We need to say, Lord, I need you. It's right. I don't know where to start. Well, you know something? I'm going to help you in a minute. You see, the empty tomb was the place of encounter with the power of Holy Spirit. He's the giver of life. And if you're somebody who's a Christian, have you been baptised in the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit comes, makes us alive to God. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives us the power. It's, the, like, the, it's like the door into the supernatural. That's what some of you who are listening in my church are missing. You come to church, but you don't have a clue spiritually. It's time to seek after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God says that if we ask truthfully, we will receive. So I want to encourage you to do that. So... He's looking for submission. That's what he's looking for. Submission to God Almighty. That's the safest place to be. I want to lead you in a prayer if you've never given your life to Jesus. And then I want to pray for you if you have. So let's pray. And you can say, repeat it after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you rose again for me. I thank you that you know about me. You know my name. You know where I am right now. And you love me. But I am aware that my barrier is not a stone, but it's my sin, my rebellion and independence, and all the wrong things I do because of it. I ask you to come and clean me. I want to receive you as my Lord and Saviour. And I give my life to you. And I will follow you and your teaching all the days of my life. I thank you that I'm a child of God now because of my belief. Now, Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
so I can have power to live for Jesus. In your name. Amen. You know, if you've said that prayer and you really mean it, then you're a child of God. That's why Jesus came. He shares his Father with us. And we want to help you with that. And it would be great if you can get in touch with us and we could send you out some, some literature or maybe a, a direct you to some places on the internet because we can't get to shops now. I want to pray for all of us. To my ECF family, I want to encourage you to go deeper with God, switch off Netflix, everything else, all the things that the enemy uses to give, give you a blah walk with him and he wants to give you a cutting edge. But I want to pray for you right now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are amazing. Lord, you have come to give us life to the full. Thank you that your death brought my life. And I ask, Lord, that I will live according to your word and I will hunger and thirst after you because I know I will be filled. I ask, Lord Jesus, that all of us, Father, will have a sense of destiny in these days. Lord, this may be the start of the shaking of the world that your word talks about before you come back. But you are preparing your church for the return of Jesus, for the end of the world. And I ask, Lord, that I will not miss out and be left behind. I pray this in Jesus' name. We thank you, Jesus, that you are alive again. It's fantastic. Amen. I just want to say to you this in closing. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. God bless you. the beginning one with God the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus you didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven sin was great, your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you were raised to life again. You have you have no equal now and forever God
God, you reign. Cause yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of what a beautiful what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of 